Gamers on Games is sponsored in part by Hello, my name is Doug Davison. I'm here with Smite Works and Fantasy Grounds to show you the Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition effects and how they're handled within the combat tracker and within combat in general and just your general uh, roles whenever you have effects applied to your characters or to your NPCs. So effects are very powerful and uh, one of the things that I've got listed here uh, you'll see that I've got a list of effects. The, this is directly out of um, the player's handbook for Dungeons and Dragons. And so each of these terms, blinded, charmed, uh, deafened, encumbered, frightened, incorporeal, intoxicated, invisible, paralyzed, prone, restrained, stable, stunned, and unconscious, all have a specific meaning and, and what they apply inside of the game is specified within the rules of Dungeons and Dragons. So um, we interpret those whenever we see that any of these keywords in attack strings or within special power effects will automatically recognize those. In addition to that, you can automatically um, just put in a list of effects just with these names and then you can drag these over to various characters and it will have an impact. So for instance, I'm going to show you I've got a ghoul and the ghoul is going to attack uh, a rogue here. In a regular attack roll you just pick it up and you can drop it on the target in the combat tracker or on a map token and it will tell you you know whether you hit or you missed <clears throat> and as you can tell it rolled a single dice so if I was to say for instance uh, Flippin was blinded I'll drag this effect over and just drop it on him either again on the uh, the icon for the character on a map or directly within the combat tracker now it says that he's blinded and it's got a duration here now if I want to expand that I can show all the effects that he is currently uh, under and so I can turn on or off that effect. I can tell it to skip that effect for now, uh, turn it off or turn it back on. And then I can also change the visibility of it. Is it visible to everybody what the effect is or is it some unknown effect which is causing uh, him some issues? Uh, <clears throat> so that might come into play if there's some sort of a curse or something like that where the player doesn't realize why am I uh, getting disadvantage on all my attack rolls or something? Then that could be you know, the, the impact. So what blinding will do, um, I've got a list of the effects here, so what blinding will do is it will grant advantage to all attacks against that character while they are blinded and in addition that character will have disadvantage on its attacks. So as an example, now if this ghoul, ghoul rolls an attack, you'll see it'll roll two dice and keep the highest. It automatically does the same thing as if you were to just manually turn on the advantage and then make the roll. But it does that for you automatically because of, of the blinded effect. Uh, <clears throat> By the same token, if, uh, if this character was to make an attack back on the ghoul, then you should see that they have uh, disadvantage now against the ghoul. And so it'll roll both, and you can see in the background there, it has disadvantage. Now one of the things with Dungeons and Dragons is that there's the idea that if you have an advantage and a disadvantage, they cancel each other out. So let's say, for instance, the ghoul was similarly blinded. Then here I've applied the blinded effect to the ghoul attacking a blinded character, those should wash out and there should be just a single roll with no advantage or disadvantage applied. And then if you wanted to uh, remove that, you just click on this delete item button and it drops it out of the system. So some of the other effects you can do, um, I'll leave those uh, visible for now. Charmed and Deafened don't really do much yet. Encumbered, uh, if you drag that over, so Encumbered has a few different options. So It'll uh, give you disadvantage on your attacks and on uh, checks for strength, dexterity, and constitution. Excuse me. <clears throat> and also disadvantage on your saving throws, dexterity, constitution, saving throws. So now that this character is encumbered, if I click on, on here and, and they go to their main tab, <clears throat> they'll make saving throws uh, with disadvantage. Uh, but you can see if I do an intelligence saving throw, that is unaffected by the fact that I'm encumbered. It's kind of a nice little time-saving feature that you can kind of track. 
Uh, this will automatically, um, you know, you can track your encumbrance also on your inventory sheet automatically. Uh, let's see, uh, frightened, uh, incorporeal. Incorporeal is kind of nice here. If I turn this on, let's say uh, Flippin has an ability to become incorporeal, then if I do an attack, it doesn't affect the damage or the attack roll at all. So here it'll automatically hit or miss just like it would before. But if I, in this case, deal damage 2d6 plus 2, drop that on the character here, you'll see that now it says partially resisted. So it did 10 points of damage. Um, actually, at this point, the character already had five, so let me try that again here. So I'll clear it out so the character has no damage to begin with, and now you can clearly see that it should be five points less. Okay, so I did 12 points of damage, and uh, it took half of that damage down, so it only de dealt six points of damage because of the incorporeal uh, resistance that was applied. Uh, so you've got intoxicated, invisible, all of these things, uh, again, will apply and give you either advantage or disadvantage to various attack rolls. Uh, let me see what some of the other uh, abilities you have. You have um, the invisible grants advantage on attacks and disadvantage on getting attacked. Uh, let's see, paralyzed grants the prone effects uh, and also grants advantage to attacks. Also, um, one thing about paralyzed is pretty neat is uh, if I grab paralyzed and bring this over, if Flippin is paralyzed, then you'll see that my saving throws will automatically fail. So here it's it's set to, it doesn't matter what you roll, I rolled a uh, 22 total, which is you know probably good enough to, to succeed on most of those. However, it's set to auto fail when this condition and when this effect is applied to the character. Uh, some other things that you can do, um, you can do some ongoing damage, uh, you can do um, resistance, vulnerabilities, regeneration, and a lot of these, as I mentioned earlier, will will pull from the character automatically. So, for instance, if I have a hobgoblin and I've entered in the hobgoblin's uh, various abilities exactly as they are in the monster manual, then you'll see that one of the things that it can do is it can do its attack with its long sword. So, if I expand the attacks and let's make it the hobgoblin's turn here you'll see it has a, a melee attack and a ranged attack and they each deal various damage. Uh, here also the weapon is versatile so it can actually be wielded two-handed uh, for additional damage or it can be wielded uh, with a single hand. Um, <clears throat> and here that's all specified in the combat or uh, you know it does 1d8 plus 1 or 1d10 plus 1 if it's used with two hands. The interesting part is when you have martial advantage you'll see that uh, once per turn it can deal an extra 2d6 damage to a creature it hits with a weapon if that creature is within five feet of an ally of the hobgoblin. Uh, so let's say for instance that condition is uh, is true you would have to apply that automatically by looking at, at your character sheet or I'm sorry looking at your at your map and your combat map and where all the players um, are in relation to the NPCs however if that is true then all you do is you just hover over that part of the text and you'll see as I move my cursor along it'll automatically recognize extra 2d6 damage. So I pick that up and I apply that to the hobgoblin and now on the very next roll he'll add an extra 2d6 damage. And the duration is one meaning as soon as that happens, as soon as that roll um, resolves, it'll automatically remove itself from the stack. So let's say he does his two-handed longsword attack, so it's going to do 1d10 plus one, it'll also add in an extra 2d6. So if I drag that, that's going to, uh, yeah, it's going to leave a mark. Uh, oops. So yeah, that did 16 points of damage to my uh, poor little thief character here. Uh, let's see, another one of the things, ghouls, for instance, um, we already kind of showed this a little bit with the paralyze effect, but if I uh, show you here, let's drag it down. Um, so he does its claws attack, its claw attack. And let's say if it hits with its claw attack, it'll deal, you know, whatever its normal damage is. And then here it has a save versus constitution that you can roll. So you just drag that up to the character. If you've actually dealt some damage, here it says, okay, well in this case, um, the player character failed their save. So now I want to apply the effect. So you click on the, um, the pop-up to pull up the NPC. And then you scroll down, you see, well, what kind of an effect is applied in this case? Um, the DC-10 con saving throw will put a paralyzed for one minute. 
So if I drag that over here, it adds paralyzed. In this case, uh, it looks like flipping was already paralyzed, but again, it says you know who who it's applied by. The ghoul in that case applied the paralyzation. Uh, let's see. Similarly, the wolf uh, has an ability here too, and so it can do the same sort of thing. You'll see that it has a, a DC 11 saving throw or knock prone, and you can also pull that instead of pulling it directly from um, you know the the attacks here where it says there's a saving strength saving throw of an 11 you can actually pull that from here as well and say okay well I'm gonna grab uh, my DC 11 saving throw against say sharp eye this time in this case they succeeded so I don't apply the effect you move on to the next character and, and you're all set um, I think the uh, the chain devil is a really good example because it does um, it restrains the character and it also um, apply some ongoing damage which is kind of a neat little effect and uh, something that's really nice to track automatically here so here let's say um, I forget which ability that is that actually does that so animate chains I believe let's see okay well unnerving mass does a DC 14 wisdom saving throw and then it does uh, applies a frightened effect so here I could put frightened on sharp eye and now they'll be frightened. Um, the animate chains I believe is where it is if I can find it here. Ah, there we go. Uh, it's just under the regular attack I guess. So, um, okay, so it grapples the character basically and then the character will become restrained and take seven ongoing damage or 2d6 piercing damage to the start of each of its turns. So let's go ahead and put that on and so here we'll say that they're frightened, they're restrained, and they have ongoing damage, damage O of 2d6 piercing. Again, you can expand that. You can see um, each of the effects kind of broken out and turn them on or off individually or skip them all. So as I cycle through, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cycle through all of my actors here in the combat tracker, and you'll see that when I get to uh, Sharp Eye's turn, okay, you see it automatically rolled my ongoing damage and applied that to the character at the start of their turn. And if you have a, um, you know, a limit on how often it, it's going to go off, here's the duration. So if I put in, instead of a zero, which is just kind of an ongoing one, let's say, for instance, I have a duration of three, then instead what's going to happen is as I circle back through, let me go through here real quick, what will happen is each turn, you see now it went from three to two, and then it'll go down um, further, now it's down to one, character still alive and then the third and final turn uh, it removed itself so that effect has expired and uh, is no longer applied to the character so uh, that's just a quick quick introduction of some of the things you can do here uh, be sure to check the wiki I'll post the wiki link um, to the summary of this video so you can kind of follow that and you can play around with all the various things and try uh, your different effects if you want to put in an effect you just basically hit create item and you can put in um, let's say immune to fire for instance just say immune colon fire just follow the instructions basically that we have uh, on our wiki page you can drag it over now you've got immune to fire as an effect and you can drag that over. Uh, that's one thing, one way you can do it basically. And then from that point on, any fire type damage will be blocked. So thanks again. This is Doug Davidson with Fantasy Grounds, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Come uh, like like our Facebook page, and uh, give us a plus one on Google, and follow our videos here. And um, we hope to see you again. Thanks.